Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me. I decided to try out my favorite things latest card kits for many reasons. The first reason is this set of color burst watercolors, as well as this stamp set. I really love a good flower stamp set. I think you can make so many different occasion cards with flowers. Here's their example page. Shows some beautiful ideas of what other crafters have done. The colors of the cardstocks are black licorice, tropical teal, jelly bean green, coral crush, and smooth white. As well as a pack of watercolor paper by Ken Oliver. I've never used this watercolor paper before, so I was excited about that. I love to try out new watercolor papers. I also bought my own pack. I was so excited about it, as well as some beautiful purple cardstock called Lavender Fields. I also got their Free With 60 die, which is a darling foldable banner. So I have never used powdered watercolors before. They're called Color Burst. There are a few different brands out there on the market. So this is the art medium I'm going to be using on most of these cards in this video. I cut down a piece of the Ken Oliver watercolor paper. It's a nice bright white. One side is smooth and one side has texture to it. I'm going to stamp my image onto the textured side. I'm using my mini Misty just so I can stamp it several times to get a good impression. This VersaFine Onyx Black ink is a waterproof ink, so it's perfect for your watercolor projects. Once I have this stamped out, I let it dry for a few minutes. I'm taping it down to my work surface to prevent it from warping too much. So this is the very first time I've ever tried the powdered watercolor. I decide I want to try it out on some wet images. So I'm laying down some clean water over these flowers, and I'm just tapping the color into the wet water. Understand if you squeeze this bottle, it releases way too much pigment. But if you just gently tap it, that's the way to go. And if I get any of the watercolor powder outside of my flowers, I can just brush it away. But when it hits the water, it just bursts with color. It's so beautiful. I can tell you that I really enjoyed playing with these. These were a lot of fun. I'm using my watercolor brush to smooth out the centers of these flowers. And then I'm going to use my heat tool just to dry this. I really love the dappled finish of these flowers. And next I'm going to paint the stems as well as a little greenery around the stems with the green powder. It has so many different colors in it besides the green. And the pigment is really strong. As you can see, I touched it there with my paintbrush, and it was a really dark green. I'm going to spread this green pigment around a little bit. I want it to be kind of a messy painting. You can see flecks of orange in this green, and I didn't put any orange down there. It was just in the green bottle. I use my heat tool a lot on this panel. The watercolor paper packaging said that it was okay to use. So I'm going to use it so I can play some more and not have to wait too long in between to let it dry. And next is the teal colored powder. I want to spread the blue around a little bit more, right up to the petals on my flowers, just so it looks more complete, more finished. It's such a strong pigment that I do brush some of it off. But the other colors are completely dry, or else they would blend together if I touched the orange. I'm going to put some blue pigment in between the greenery. And that's all I really do on this panel. I'm going to allow it to dry completely before I cut it out with my die. 
And I like this dye. It's from Tim Holtz. I can't remember what it's called. I'll link it below and over on my blog. But it cuts it out with kind of a rough looking edge. I'm going to prop up this panel with some foam tape. And I used a piece of the Jelly Bean Green cardstock to mat this panel. I stamped out the sentiment that came in this set that says hello. And I'm going to put a little bit of washi tape to add a little bit of interest to my sentiment. And I'm going to adhere that down flat with a piece of score tape. I was going to add a few sequins, but I really liked how it looked all on its own. I thought this was a really cute card, kind of different. On my next card, I taped down another piece of the Ken Oliver watercolor paper. I'm going to put the pigment down first, and then I'm going to mist it with some shimmer spray. I really like the speckled texture of this. I don't move it around at all with a brush. At this point, I just let it dry. I did use my heat tool, but I didn't show that part. This panel is going to be the background for my flowers. It's hard for the camera to pick up the shine, but it's really shimmery and pretty. My flowers, I'm going to paint very simply. I want them to be white flowers, so I'm adding a little bit of gray shadows using my Prima watercolors. I'll add a little bit of green to the stems. These stems are so narrow that it's hard to stay in the lines. So I'm calling this loose painting. <laughs> it does go out of the lines, but that's okay. For the center of these flowers, I'm going to put in a little bit of orange. I think that just brightens the whole piece up. I will allow this piece to dry. And then I'm going to pull out the coordinating die that came with this. I'm going to tape that in place with a little bit of purple tape and run that through my Sizzix Big Shot machine. It leaves a little bit of a white border, but I like how it cut out the stems. It looks so pretty. I'm also going to use a die to cut out this orange panel. This is my wonky stitch die. I put some foam tape behind my flowers to add a little bit of dimension to this card. I had to cut down really narrow pieces for the stems. Then once all of the release paper has been peeled off, I'm going to attach this to the center of my card. I just love the orange behind these white flowers. I'm going to mat this piece with a blue cardstock that came in the kit. As you can see, I cut out a chunk out of the middle so that I could use it on another card and not to waste paper. I really loved this blue color and I didn't have any in my stash. <laughs> and then I can just adhere everything down with some liquid glue. I'm adding some iridescent bubbles from Studio Katya on this panel. These look really pretty on flower stamps. The sentiment, I'm simply stamping the high from this set, the bottom left corner. I used Versamark ink, because that's a nice dark black ink. And that completes this card. On the inside, I adhered some of the cardstock from this kit just on the corners. I thought that looked kind of cute. I really love stamping my images onto craft card stock and then coloring them in with colored pencils. So that is the technique I'm doing for my next card. This is a piece of Desert Storm card stock from my own stash. And I'm using some extreme black ink from MFT to stamp this out remembering to keep it on the door of my Misty so that I can stamp it again after I'm done. I always like to refresh the lines of my image when I'm done with my colored pencils. The pencils can obscure the lines a little bit. It makes a big difference to restamp it again. 
I'm using my Polychromos colored pencils to color this in. The colors I used will be listed over on my blog if you're interested in that. But I'm basically using three different shades of purple. The darkest shade I'm putting down at the bottom of the leaf, and then it lightens out as I progress up. And then the centers of these are going to be a combination of brown, orange, and yellow. Later on, I decide that it needs more contrast, so I do bring in a really dark plum colored pencil for my flower petals. I really love the look of this technique. I think it always turns out so charming. I'm not pressing very hard with these pencils because I want to get a good blend. I don't want to burnish them. I'm just going back and forth with these three different colored pencils, and I'm leaving some highlights on each petal. You can always come back in with a white colored pencil. But I wanted the highlight on these flowers to be the craft color cardstock this time, just more subtle. To make the insides of these flowers pop a little more, I pulled out my white gel pen just to add a few dots. And this just helps to brighten it up as well. The stems needed to be a little bit darker, so I'm just coming in with another layer of the colored pencil. Once my coloring is done, I'm going to pop it back into my Mini Misty, re-ink my stamp, and fix these lines so that they're a lot more crisp. That looks so much better. I am going to use the coordinating die on this panel. I cut that out with my Sizzix Big Shot machine off camera. I keep that on a bookshelf near my table. I'm adding the white gel pen to the centers of my last two flowers that I colored in. And I always have to remind myself to use a light touch so that the ink will flow properly. I'm going to use the piece of blue cardstock that I cut out from my last card. And I used a cute faux stitched die to do this. I'm attaching a piece of Baker's twine to the top of this tag die cut. The sequins you see on the right, I don't end up using. I thought they would be perfect for this card, but you never know until you put the sequins down on your card. They just blended in too much with the background. I'm going to attach this to another piece of the craft card stock, the Desert Storm. I'll cut off the ends of my bow, and I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape behind this die cut. I'm going to attach this at an angle on my card front, and I'm going to use some liquid glue to attach it to a white card base. I'm going to attach my flowers to the front of my card with a little bit of liquid glue as well as some foam tape just to match the height of the tag. And then I can just flip it over and cut off the excess that's hanging over the edge. So instead of the teal sequins, I pull out my bottle of Nouveau Drops in white. I'll put some various sizes of dots across this panel. And I'm tapping that on the lid of the Nouveau Drops just to flatten them out a little bit. And I'm going to add some Wink of Stella over the flowers to add a little bit of sparkle. The sentiment, I had a hard time deciding what to do. I pulled out a sentiment from another stamp set that says, Happiest of Birthdays to You. And I decide to put this along the bottom with some more liquid glue. I let the Nouveau drops dry for a few hours before I did this part. And the sentiment seemed to get lost in the blue of the tag. So I'm going to add a little bit of 
washi tape along this sentiment strip. You'll see that here on the finished card. Kind of different. I don't know if I like that too much. <laughs> and then I added more washi tape on the inside. For my next card, I cut out a piece of the black cardstock that came in this kit. I'm going to stamp out these flowers with some Hero Arts Ursamark ink. And I'm going to pour over some white embossing powder. This landscape panel is going to be my main panel. I'm going to stamp them out on another piece of black cardstock as a portrait alignment. However, on this first panel, I do stamp them out twice. Now I can just pour over the white embossing powder. I think that looks so striking on this black cardstock. And I can melt the embossing powder. It looked bright when I poured the powder over, but it really brightens up once the powder has melted. And now for the fun part. I pulled out my metallic gem-toned watercolors. And I'm going to add a little bit of pigment on these flowers. This isn't a watercolor cardstock, so I'm trying not to add too much water to it, just mostly pigment. And I'm going to paint these flowers purple, and then some of them are going to be pink. It looks very beautiful on this black cardstock. And then on the centers of these flowers, I'm going to add a little bit of the gold and let that bleed into the purples and the pinks. just dropping in the color while they're still wet. I decide to go ahead and add the gold to the centers of the others and then drop in the pink pigment and it's just fun to watch it melt together. I allowed this panel to dry and I'm going to flick on some more of the gold paint across this panel. I put this panel in a box just to save my desk area from being covered in this gold pigment. For the sentiment, I'm stamping out the one that says love. And I'm going to emboss that with some more white embossing powder. I usually leave my sentiment for the end. I get so involved in putting a card together that I forget about the sentiment till the last minute. But I can usually find a place for it somewhere. The second panel of flowers I cut out with the coordinating die, and I'm adhering it over this panel with some foam squares and cutting off the excess with my scissors. I cut down a piece of the Lavender Fields cardstock to create my card base. I just love this purple. And I'm going to adhere this panel down flat onto my card base. I did cut the panel down a little bit so that you could see the purple border. I'm adhering a few sequins across this panel. Not that it needed any more shimmer, but I always like the look of sequins on cards. And that finishes off this card. I think this one is my favorite of the set. For card number five, I'm using a piece of the Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. The Ken Oliver watercolor paper was fun to try, but I still prefer my Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. It takes a lot more water. I'm using the Color Burst watercolor again, but I added water to it and I'm just applying it onto my flowers like a regular watercolor. I'm working in layers again. I don't apply the paint all the way to the tips. So I'm adding the paint to the petals and then I add a little more pigment at the base of these petals just to add more shadows. And as you can see, I use some gold embossing powder to emboss these flowers onto this paper. It's really fun to watch the paint flow when I speed up the video. 
Now that I've painted in all of the petals, I'm going in with another layer of the orange. You can see right away how much depth this adds to the painting. I did allow the paint to dry first. To create a deeper shadow, I mixed some of this orange with the blue pigment. Mixing the complementary colors like this will give you a brown color, but it ends up being a very nice and rich tone that you can add some shadows in your painting with. Next, I can add some green to the stems. I didn't let my painting dry enough, so I was a little bit worried about this bleeding into the orange, especially on this flower here. <laughs> And I'm going to bring the color out a little more to the edge of the petals, leaving some white highlights. And now I'm going to dry this panel with my heat tool because I want it to be completely dry before I use my coordinating die with this. So I did some selective die cutting using the coordinating die. I only cut out half of the flower and I'm going to use my pen knife to cut out the rest. I'm also using my scissors to help me cut out the larger bits of this section. I'm using my small set of cutting plates to cut this out on to protect my mat. Partial die cutting is a fun technique to try out. It adds a lot of cute interest to your cards. I was going to leave the right side of this panel just plain. But then I decide to come in with some more of the blue color burst powder to color that in just a little bit. And I don't bother taping it down because I'm not going all the way out to the edge. Just putting down some quick color. MFT did a really great job of matching their colored cardstocks to these color burst pigments. Once my painting has dried, I'm going to use some liquid glue to attach this piece to a piece of the colored cardstock. I stamped out my sentiment off camera and I just used some more antique gold embossing powder for this, added a few sequins, and that completes this card. The sentiment is from an older stamp set from MFT. I wanted to use that to have more birthday cards in my stash. I'm always needing birthday cards, it seems. Before I go, I wanted to show you a beautiful product I got in the mail from my sister Kathy. She owns the company called Olive and Oak. I will leave the link below and also over on my YouTube channel. She makes the most beautiful rollable styling mats. This is the one she custom created for me. They come in different fabrics. I chose the linen fabric. They also come in velvet and suede and they come in a variety of colors. I chose blush, and it's this really soft pink that you see here. And on the other side, I have the color sand. They use these mats a lot for weddings. They work perfectly for card crafters too, who like to take pictures of their creations. I'm going to show you how I set up my cards to take pictures. In the past, I've used large poster boards. But the one I have, I'm tired of, and it's getting all tattered around the edges. So I'm going to try out this linen styling mat. I use a bottle of embossing powder to lift the card up off of the surface. And then I can add flowers or ribbon or sequins or dyes. Sometimes I even use my art mediums, like my Copic markers or my colored pencils, to add interest to my pictures. Since it's summer, I've been using a lot of flowers from my garden. I've been having a lot of fun with that. And since the card is lifted up off of the surface, I can kind of tuck the items behind it or under it. I'm really loving the texture of this mat. It's going to add more interest to my photographs. I chose to use the sand colored side for these cards. They go better with the colors in my cards but I will definitely be using the blush side too for other projects. I also take pictures of the insides of my cards and I use two bottles to prop up the card. 
And I just use my iPhone to take pictures of everything. So that would be my shot right there. I wanted to show you this purple one. And you'll see all of the pictures of these cards at the end of this video and over on my blog. The mat is a really good size. I can take pictures of all of my cards together and not run out of room. I used to use a 12 by 12 inch paper for that, which was a challenge because I had to squeeze the cards really close together and make sure the shot didn't go off of the edge of the paper. So check out her website over at oliveandoak.com. She has some really beautiful products. Thank you, my crafty friends, for watching. I hope you all take the time to sit down and create something awesome today. Have a wonderful day. Bye.